going on everybody? Thanks for tuning in to my second video. Uh, today I want to talk about five tips uh, to eating healthy. Uh, some of the tips that I utilized during my weight loss and uh, just things that I think might be helpful for you. So before I dive into the tips, I uh, just want to make sure I get this out there. Uh, I am not a physician, uh, although I don't necessarily think that they uh, have the best knowledge when it comes to diet and nutrition. Uh, but again, I'm not a physician, I'm not a dietitian not a nutritionist. Uh, realistically, I don't have any sort of credential behind my name uh, to claim any to be any sort of expert. Um, however, what I do have is just personal experience. Uh, again, two different times where I've lost over 100 plus pounds. And so everything I'm going to share with you today is just what's worked for me. Uh, and you know, I saw really solid results. I'm not telling you guys this is what you should do or how you should do it. Again, it's just five tips that worked for me and I just want to share it in case uh, you might want to try it or think it might work for you. So tip number one, calories are king. Uh, can't express that enough. There are so many different diets out there. You know, I talked about it a little bit in the first video. There's the keto, South Beach, high protein diets. There's a carnivore diet, um, all sorts of different diets. I mean, just type it into Google and you'll get numerous hits. Uh, at the end of the day, personally, again, my belief is uh, it's all about calories. Um, calorie is king and it's so important that you track your calories. No matter what diet you're on, I know there's a lot of diets that say, oh, you don't have to worry about tracking them. Uh, I disagree strongly, you know? Calories in versus calories out. You wanna have a, you know, a deficit at the end of the day. Uh, you know, caloric deficit is the, is the word you probably hear all the time. And I am a big proponent of that and believe strongly in that. You gotta be in a caloric deficit. Uh, and the number one way to achieve that is by tracking your calories. If you don't know what's going into your body, uh, it's really hard to be in a caloric deficit. A lot of these calorie tracking uh, apps or tools, they also have a place where you can put in your exercise and you know it'll tell you, okay, well you ran a, you know 30 minutes a day, that means you get an extra 400 calories. I personally do not input any sort of exercises into that calorie equation. I, I, I don't care about that. All, all I care about is just the food that I consume and tracking those calories. I don't want to say, oh, you know, I ran an extra mile today, so I get to eat something else. No. Anything I do exercise wise, that's just icing on the cake. Uh, I guess that's a bad way to describe it here on a weight loss channel. Tip number two avoid added sugars, sugars in general. Uh, realistically. You know, I know that sounds like a pretty obvious tip, um, but uh, I think you'd be really surprised at what sugar is really in. Uh, it's basically in everything. Prime example I always use is milk. Uh, I'm, I was a big skim milk drinker, drinker before I started this weight loss uh, journey, I guess. Um, and I drink half a gallon to a gallon of skim milk every single day. You know, one thing with sugar is that it really doesn't provide any sort of nutritional benefit whatsoever outside of just high calories. It's full of energy, uh, so it's, I guess, great in that sense. Uh, but when you're trying to lose weight, uh, you already have a lot of excess energy, and that was eventually converted into fat stores. Realistically, sugar is something you definitely want to avoid. Again, there's no nutritional benefit outside of just high, high energy, and we already got enough of that. Tip number three, uh, avoid overly processed foods. Uh, again, this is definitely uh, one of those that's pretty obvious, kind of a no-brainer, but um, it's pretty hard to do when you go to the grocery store and you start looking at all the different products that are available. Uh, like 90% of them are going to be processed, filled with chemicals, and, and really it's, it's not food the way it was really intended to be you know made originally so uh, I know you can't avoid it all the time and I definitely don't avoid it uh, 100% but I just try my best to try to focus on whole foods and foods that aren't just littered with different chemicals I encourage you to look at the label uh, look at the ingredients list and if there's just 10 15 ingredients that you have no idea how to pronounce you know stay away from it but you don't want to put something in your body that you're not familiar with you know our bodies are machines and you want to fuel your body and I think there's a lot to be said uh, for putting good fuel in your body even if it's something that has low calories and it fits your calories goals I would still pick the option that's not filled with ten, tons of chemicals tip number four uh, it's gonna be track your macros the good news is here is that if you're tracking your calories with an app or a tool, uh, chances are it's going to track your macros for you. Uh, again, I use MyFitnessPal. That is what uh, 
I just ended up downloading and use and I was familiar with and it was easy to use uh, and it kind of tracks you know as you track your calories it kind of tracks your macros for you but uh, learn about macros and track them uh, set a goal uh, I'm not telling you specifically what goal to set but for me it was 40% protein 30% fats 30% carbs I think it's important especially for the goals that I had I really wanted to lose weight but I also wanted to focus on building some lean body mass uh, and with the strength training the extra protein I thought was very beneficial for me and into building muscle uh, one thing I'll also say about protein is uh, when I first started uh, losing weight back in February I actually immediately went out and bought some whey protein uh, and started taking protein shakes and I know a couple comments I got from some people was you know why are you taking protein when you're trying to lose weight that's just gonna help you gain weight uh, which isn't true as long as you're <laughs> taking protein shakes uh, and taking them in a way that stays inside your calorie goals, you're not going to gain weight. Uh, again, it's all based on caloric deficit. So I replaced a couple of meals with some protein shakes. That way I can increase my protein and make sure that my body was fueled for what I was trying to accomplish, which was, again, lose weight and then also build muscle. Finally, tip five, uh, plan your meals and be consistent. This is probably the biggest tip of all of them. Uh, the most important one, I think, kind of wraps them all into a little bow. Um, but to be successful and lose weight, I'm a big believer that you need to plan your meals. Uh, plan ahead, a week ahead, if possible. Um, if you don't plan your meals ahead, you just wake up in the morning and you're just going to try to eat healthy, you're going to find yourself getting hungry, not having good options available, uh, and really having to give in and just try to find something and you know make the best of what you got. Uh, so you need to have a game plan, uh, you need to execute your game plan, uh, and that way you take the thinking out of it. You know, you spend a little bit of time at the beginning to prep and get everything ready, and then literally as you go on your day, uh, you got your fuel ready to go. Uh, the other big thing when it comes to planning is I'm a big believer on, on setting meal times. And so to give you an idea kind of what my day would be like, um, you know, I work eight to five, so I would have breakfast before I go. So probably about seven o'clock I'd have breakfast. Uh, and then when I got to work at about 1030, I'd have my first snack. Uh, which would be like a Greek yogurt with some protein powder in there. Uh, at 12.30 I'd have my lunch that's already been pre-prepared. Uh, and then at 3 o'clock I'd have my second snack which would be like a Kind bar or something along those lines, low in sugar. Uh, and then uh, when I got home, about say 6 o'clock or so is when I'd have dinner. And then I'd probably have another snack uh, before, before I go to the gym. And then after the gym I'd finish with a protein shake uh, and some creatine or something like that. I was really awful with snacks and just kind of always eating and grazing all the time. I'd really suggest picking time slots. The benefit with having small meals spread out throughout the day uh, is you don't have to go all day or long periods of time feeling hungry. You know, when you start feeling hungry, that's when you overeat, that's when you give into temptations. So I focused on small meals spread out two to three hours apart throughout the day, and I would just eat just enough knowing that, hey, in two to three hours I get to eat again. So now that you have your meal plan put together, I think consistency is key. I shared my story where I have not had a cheat day and I know that works for me. I'm not telling you don't have a cheat day or a cheat meal. You know, you gotta find what works for you, um, but stick to it no matter what you decide. If you decide you're gonna have a cheat day on the weekends or a cheat meal on Fridays, you know, that's perfectly fine. Be consistent, be consistent every single day, which kind of leads me to the last thing I wanna talk about, sustainability. Uh, that is a word that gets thrown around a lot. Um, and I think I have a little bit of a different take on sustainability than a lot of people do. Um, a lot of people, you know, say, oh, be, have a diet that's sustainable, or they'll probably won't even say diet, they'll say change your lifestyle, it's a lifestyle, uh, you know, don't get on a diet because you can't do that for the rest of your life, you know, find something that's sustainable. And I get it, uh, and it makes sense to me. Um, however, here's where my take's a little bit different. Um, sustainability, I don't think it is a, uh, a lifetime thing per se. I think I've proven that I can sustain the diet I'm on, uh, and it's sustainable. I mean, I've done it for about a year now. Um, it's not the diet I'm going to be on for the rest of my life. I'll be upfront with you on that. Uh, and the reason for that is it's eventually, you know, I want to introduce a little more normal foods. Um, but just like anything else in life, 
people change, things change, things grow, things adapt. Um, you know, everything has a point to it, right? So at a high school, the first job you had, I promise you, most of you, you don't have that job anymore, right? It was a stepping stone to either get to school or get to the next job or get to the, you know, your career. Uh, and that's what I think diet can do for you. So if you are 405 pounds like me, I think it's really beneficial to, you know, get on a diet, make drastic changes that help get you to the next point, right? So for me, eating 1,500 calories a day is not something I'm going to do for the rest of my life, but I was able to do it for a year, and it filled the need. I'm no longer 405 pounds, you know, I'm in a much better place, and now I have the opportunity to change my diet and tweak it, right? Now, some might say, well, you could have just, you know, went with something that's not quite as aggressive. You could have went to 2,500 calories from the get-go. And yeah, sure, I could have done that. Would I have lost weight? Yeah, probably not as fast. But the difference for me is the level of motivation. Uh, it's a lot easier to stay motivated when you're seeing results than it is when you're not seeing results. So for 13 years, I tried dieting a little bit, right? And what happens is you don't see significant results, right? Because you're only kind of half committed to the process. And then next thing you know, you're back to your old habits, you're back to eating bad food, and you know, that's it. It's, you, you didn't accomplish your goal. So for me, sustainability is key, it's important, I get it, but I just think it comes in different ways, right? Um, and hopefully my example of, you know, working and, you know, your first job versus what you do now, um, you know, is a good way to illustrate that. Nothing's static, it's all dynamic, it's all fluid, and I think diet's no different. And the last thing I want to talk about real quick is uh, I'm big into motivational speakers. One of the ones that I follow and almost listen to daily is Inky Johnson. If you haven't heard a story, I'll link it below. Uh, please watch that video. Uh, it is impressive. I mean, it, it is, yeah, I, I, yeah, no words really do it justice. So just watch the video and, uh, you know, leave a comment and tell me what you think about it. One of my favorite concepts that Inky Johnson talks about surrounds his definition of commitment in his videos. Uh, he defines commitment as uh, staying true to what you said you would do long after the mood that you had set it in has left. If you're going to say that, hey, I'm going to start a diet, and you say it right after you just devoured a whole pizza and you're so full and you're not hungry anyways, um, when you start getting hungry again, uh, commitment is sticking true to those words, right? Uh, it's really easy to say something when you know you're full and you know you're happy and you know you can you can't even think about putting any more food in your stomach. Uh, it's easy to say, oh yeah, I'm gonna lose weight. But when that feeling goes away and you still stick to it, then that's the commitment. So uh, again, check out the video below. It is a great, great video, great watch. Uh, tell me your thoughts. Uh, appreciate you guys sticking around to the end and watching this video. Uh, if you liked it, please thumbs up. Uh, please feel free to leave a comment below. And if you want to subscribe, just saying. Uh, and finally, go nose.